Hey everybody, Nick Espinosa, your chief security fanatic here. And in China news and also Apple news, how far should a U.S. company bend for China? I think this is an important one because we got some really interesting news coming out of China the last couple of days. And I'm not talking about the consternations here in the U.S. Congress about TikTok or Timu or anything like that. This is coming straight from China. Now, there's a really interesting write-up in Tech Spot by Rob Thubron of this, who I'm cribbing from heavily. But I think this is an important one that we all need to consider because Apple has once again kowtowed to the Chinese government by removing WhatsApp and Threads, both made by Meta, aka Facebook, from their China app store in the iPhone and iPad. So they're gone. Med WhatsApp and Threads are gone. Now, Apple has said that it was ordered to do so at the request of the Cyberspace uh, Administration of China, which claimed the demand was related to national security concerns. This could be in also in part retaliation for TikTok, but that's a whole other speculation. Now, encrypted messaging apps from Telegram and Signal were also deleted from the store. Obviously, those look nothing like TikTok. Threads could be the closest thing. WhatsApp is also considered secure, although I've done videos, podcasts, and radio segments on why it's not. But Telegram and Signal are vastly more secure than any of those, and they're removing them probably because they're using heavier encryption that the Chinese government cannot see and spy on very easily. Now, while these four apps in question are only some of the many Western services and products that are blocked by China's Great Firewall. Users in China have traditionally been able to bypass those restrictions using a VPN or virtual private network. I've seen this in action as I've spent time uh, for work in Beijing on the cybersecurity side where uh, basically those users will connect to a VPN just over the border to like Mongolia or Japan or somewhere else and then get access to Facebook because Facebook, etc. won't natively run. It's just simply going through the great wall of uh, the great firewall of China. Now, other meta apps, including Facebook, Instagram, and Messenger, are still available on Apple's App Store in China, as were YouTube and X, aka Twitter. Now, Apple said in a statement, "quote We are obligated to follow the laws in the countries we where we operate, even when we disagree." End quote. Now, that may be technically true. But to me, that's a huge cop out when we are taking collectively all of this against the backdrop of the authoritarian enforcement of laws. And so here's why Apple's excuse is, I don't think, really passing the smell test for me. Apple iPhone sell, uh, basically the sales of uh, iPhones in China fell by about a quarter during the first six weeks of 2024. But the country, though, itself, China remains a huge and very important market for Apple, Tim Cook, CEO of Apple, praised China just last year, about a year ago, in March of 2023, calling the relationship that China and Apple has symbiotic. And even as tensions between Beijing and Washington, D.C. keep rising, uh, Chinese Vice Premier Ding Xue Shuang told Cook in October, basically last year, six months ago, that the country remained committed to its relationship with Apple. And here's the kicker of the whole thing. A report from 2021 claimed that Cook signed a secret deal in 2016 worth $275 billion with Chinese officials. That would basically uh, ensure that Apple invested in the country's economic and technological development, aka outsourcing uh, production of the iPhone to Foxconn, among other things, Foxconn being a massive Chinese-based manufacturer. In exchange for that, Apple's operations and services would not face the same extensive regulatory scrutiny that Chinese agencies often put on foreign companies, not just from the United States, but from around the world. And so the bottom line is, while they're saying, yes, we have to comply, they don't want to lose the money. And so that opens up the large question in terms of the United States and uh, basically U.S. allies. If we are collectively letting our tech companies be very heavily censored and not fully do their jobs in these countries, should we collectively band together as nations and say we should just simply stop doing business in China? The problem is China's got over a billion people hundreds of millions of tech users and quite frankly the largest apple store i've ever seen in my entire life is in the wang fujing district down in basically almost the center of beijing it was like four stories tall it was packed absolutely packed the last time i was in china so this is not going away anytime soon 
But I think it really behooves us to look longitudinally like the Chinese do on situations like this and understand if we are continuing to censor or we are continuing to kowtow to the Chinese government's whims, it may fundamentally start transforming how we as an organization, or we as a, as a society, I should say, not an organization, operate. And so should we allow that? Now, you can make the argument, well, we're trying to ban TikTok, et cetera, et cetera. But TikTok has been caught consistently through whistleblowers, through code reviews and all of that, actually sending data back to China when it's been very transparent uh, in terms of the WhatsApp, Facebook, et cetera, that these are American-based companies, that this data is going to sit there. We also have much better data privacy laws, no matter how much China, uh, China touts their GDPR-style data for their citizens, everything is data mined in China. I've done video after podcast after segment after that. So please feel free to go ahead and get on YouTube and in my channel type in China and you'll find a lot of that. But this is a huge issue. So I leave it up to you. It may be retaliation for TikTok, but the bigger picture is we've got yet another acquiescence to the Chinese government by American companies. Look at Disney. Look at all of the others that have done that. I don't think longitudinally that is in our best strategic interest, not just corporation to corporation, but as a society as whole. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And please feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well, where hopefully you'll never be censored unless you're in China. But as always, stay safe, stay online, and please attempt to stay private. Thanks, everybody.